Amen. Thank you, Miss Sharon. We appreciate that. Appreciate God being a God of second chances. Can anybody say amen to that out there? Amen. I'm glad we have a God that is long suffering. Well, if you have your Bible tonight, if you'll turn to Daniel chapter 11 and Revelation chapter 6, we're going to go back and forth between the book of Revelation and the 11th chapter of Daniel. We'll probably look at some other passages. But tonight, I'm going to finish out Daniel chapter 11. And tonight I'm going to be looking at Satan's coming conqueror. And that's exactly what the passage is that we're in. And we're going to begin reading here, if you'd read with me in verse number uh, 37, just for context. We'll go all the way back to 36 and read through the end of the chapter. Now, this is about the future coming conqueror of the world. Now, I know there are a lot of people that would mention conquerors by name like Julius Caesar, very famous in his conquest. Napoleon, very famous in his conquest. Alexander the Great. I'm not talking about people that conquered their country. I'm talking about people that conquered the world. And there is a coming king, and he is Satan's coming conqueror. And we read that, if you've got there your mark in Daniel chapter 11, and the, the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself, magnify himself above every god, shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. For that that is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any god. For he shall magnify himself above all, but in his estate shall he honor the God of forces, and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for gain. And at that time of the end shall the king of the south push at him. And the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots, and with horsemen, and with many ships, and he shall enter into the countries, and shall overflow and pass over. He shall enter also into the glorious land, and many countries shall be overthrown. But these shall escape out of his hand, even Edom and Moab and the chief of the children of Ammon. He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. But he shall have power over the treasures of gold and of silver, and over all the precious things of Egypt, and the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly make away many. And he shall plant the tabernacle of his palace between the seas in the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end, and none shall help him. Now, that is a picture of who you see in Revelation chapter 6. Would you look there just a moment? These seals are broken. And it begins the book of Revelation after chapter 4 and 5. You don't have any mention of the church after chapters 3 and then 4 and 5 you have a scene in heaven. I believe that's because the church is not going through the tribulation. Can I get an amen right there? But the tribulation begins in earnest in chapter 6, verse 1. The Bible says, I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, and one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. Now watch the first beast. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now I want you to understand that without question, History is not finished when it comes to a conquering king. Julius Caesar conquered the known world. Uh, Napoleon conquered much of the known world. Alexander the Great conquered his known world. And we look back at that and we say, well, you know, Hitler tried, but he failed. I'm, I'm telling you that there is coming in the future, and it may be, are you listening to me? It may be in the very near future that there is going to be a conqueror that Satan sends out as his conqueror and he is going to conquer this world. And that's going to happen in a hurry. In fact, if you go back in Daniel chapter 11, I want you to see that, how quickly he rises. The Bible says there in verse number 40, and, and at the time,
time of the end shall the king of the south push at him and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind. You see that? Well, we have whirlwinds in Alabama. We call them tornadoes. Scares people half to death. Uh, I, I don't know how many of you here have ever been through a tornado, but I've had people ask me, y'all have tornadoes in Alabama? Absolutely. People scared to death have buildings that they go into and they have, they have basements that they have inside of their houses. They build safe rooms in their houses because if you've ever seen the destruction of a tornado, one minute everything is like it should be, the next minute everything is gone. And here it says that he's going to be like a whirlwind that he's going to come against him like a whirlwind with chariots and horsemen with many ships and shall enter the countries and shall overflow and pass over. It's like Hitler's blitzkrieg. You know, blitzkrieg, lightning war. Gather all of these different types of uh, military forces, whether it be in the air, the land, the sea, and blitz someone else. And that's exactly what the Antichrist is going to do. It's going to be something that rises in a hurry, but that's not a surprise because Jesus Christ lived in obscurity for 30 years. Nobody knew who he was. He was the son of a carpenter. But boy, at 30 years of age, he stepped out and was baptized by John at the River Jordan. And for the next three years, he turned the world upside down. And when he went to Calvary and died and then rose again the third day, he's been turning the world upside down ever since. Amen. Amen. He rose quickly. And so will the Antichrist. In fact, I'm going to tell you right now, I, I really, I get put out at some of these things about blood moons and, and about people making prophetic statements about things I don't think they have any knowledge about whatsoever. Tonight, I'm not going to talk about Russia. I'm not going to talk about countries that I'm not certain about. But I'm telling you right now, I believe with all my heart, we are one trumpet away from this man stepping out onto the scene. One trumpet sound. You say, which trumpet is that? Trumpet in heaven? There'll be a shout, the voice of the archangel, and everybody's born again. We're going home. Hallelujah! We're going home. Yeah. But this world, this world's going to see a conqueror like it's not ever seen. And I want to notice some things about him. We've talked about the surging spirit. We're past the surging spirit now. We're in the actual conquest. And I want you to look and see what the Bible says about him. Look at verse number 39. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds, with a strange God whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many. Amen. In other words, he is going to be a conqueror of the world's governments. Now, not all of them. The Bible says that they shall rule over many. If you look down at verse 41, he shall enter into the glorious land, and many countries shall be overthrown. Not all of them. But these shall escape out of his hand, even Edom, Moab, and the chief of the children of Ammon. Verse 42, he shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. He is going to be a conqueror of the world's governments. He is going to take control of the world's governments. It speaks about the ten kings, and I'm not going to go into detail about that, but we looked at that in Daniel chapter 7 already in verse number 24, and the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise. He gives his power, and they give their power unto him, and he begins to take control of the world governments. Now, are you listening to me? If you're not born again... The fact that people don't like who's governing this country and don't like the direction of this country, there's going to be a man step out on the stage and he's going to take control of the governments of this world and it won't be for the good of its citizens. He's going to take that control. The Bible says there in verse number 40 that he shall, the, excuse me, in verse number 41, uh, that he shall enter also in the glorious land and many countries shall be overthrown. I, I, remember, I remember hearing about one of our secretaries of states saying this about America. They said that America is the indispensable country. In other words, you could lose every other country in the world, but you can't lose America. You know what that is? That is a haughtiness. That is a pride that is misplaced. I'm telling you right now, there is no nation that is above falling to this man. If Rome fell, what makes America any different? And this, this king, this conqueror, this antichrist is going to go out and he is going to conquer the world. Look there, Revelation chapter 17. I said we would go back and forth. I want you to see this. Revelation 17. If you look at verse number 12, Revelation 17, 12. The Bible says, And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. That's the Antichrist. 
These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb. Boy, and I like this. And the lamb shall overcome them. For he is the Lord of lords and king of kings, and they that are with him are called chosen and faithful. And you have, without question, a time that it looks like he has stepped forward, the Antichrist, and he has conquered the governments of the world. Amen. But not only that, go back to Daniel chapter 11, if you look there in Daniel 11. Look at verse number 39, another thing that I think interesting. Daniel eleven thirty nine. 39, the Bible says, He shall cause them to rule over many. Look at verse 39, And shall divide the land for gain. Amen. You know, I think, I think he's going to conquer the lands of this world. You know, I, I think it's a very unusual day we live in. You know, private property is something that has come under attack, not just in America, but around the world, that that property really shouldn't belong to you. It, shouldn't be, it belongs to the better good of all those that are around you. And it doesn't really matter if it was worked for, paid for, passed down to you. Private property is something that is being taken away. The rights to own property, the rights of what you can do with that property. Well, I'm telling you right now, this, this conqueror is going to take and divide the land for gain. He's just going to say, I'm just going to take the property. I'm just going to take the land. You know, I hear somebody saying, well, they won't come take my land. They, they come take my land, they'll do it pride in my gun from my dead fingers, and that's exactly what they'll do. If you're around during this time, you're not going to have your own land. It's going to belong to the conquering king. It's going to belong to the Antichrist. He's going to determine what people have and what they don't. Have. Everybody talking about socialism. Everybody talking, all these people talking about Marxism. I tell you what, they're going to get exactly what they want in an antichrist that says it all belongs to me and I'm going I'm I'm to dole it out to who's on my side. Amen. He's going to take and divide the land for gain. Amen. Then look what it says, verse number 41, he shall enter also into the glorious land. Many countries shall be overthrown. Verse 42, he shall stretch forth his hand upon the countries and the lands of Egypt shall not escape. Verse 43, but he shall have power over the treasures of gold and of silver and over all the precious things of Egypt. He's going to conquer the wealth of this world. Now, I think that's interesting the way that's worded there. It's worded that way twice in this passage. In verse 38, you have gold, silver, precious stones. You have the same thing that's mentioned here in verse number 43, gold, silver, precious stones, precious things. And, and what, I, what I, I look at that, I see that, that is a wealth that is tangible. That, that's not a paper money. How many of you know that the, the more money the government prints without anything to back it up, the higher our inflation is going to become? How many of you understand that the more money we print without something to back it, that the less power our dollar will have to buy? All I have to do is go look in history. And, you know, I, you know, the world governments right now and the world economy, they call it, is going to be something that the Antichrist, he's going to conquer, and he's going to have control of the world's treasures. He's going to take them to himself. I had a friend of mine who was a banker, and he said, he said, Brother Joel, he said, I always had a problem trying to figure out how could you have a one-world economy? How's that possible? He's in banking. He said, there's so many different currencies, so many different ways that people do business. And back in 2008... How many, the, how many of you remember the housing collapse in 2008? You remember that? And, and he said, and he said, and you know what I watched? He said, and the debt that was taken and bought and sold, one corporation would buy the debt of all these people that had houses and they would sell it to another group that would buy it and sell it to another group. And he said it was so interweaved throughout the world that when the housing bubble burst that it affected not just the places where people had bought houses, but it affected the whole world because the economies were tied together. And he said, now, now I can see how you can tie one world together in its monetary system because of debt. How many of you think the world's in debt? I didn't ask if you were in debt. You, you know, when I read about words like our country is 1.8 trillion, uh, you know, five trillion dollars, and I mean, and you start adding, I mean, I don't even know how to get my mind around the word trillion. We are so far in debt, and here's the deal: everybody else is in debt, so we're all happily in debt until this guy steps out, and he says, "Now I'm going to take the precious gold and the silver." 
and I'm going to take the precious things, and you guys are going to be under my control. That's what he's going to do. He's going to conquer the world's financial system. You say, well, I've got mine stored in a jar. It probably won't be worth anything. You know what I'd say? I, I wouldn't worry. I, listen, I'm not going to be here to buy or to spend. I'm going to be in another place. Amen. And when I say that, I want you to look at it again. Put a mark just so you understand what I'm saying. Go if you would to Revelation 13. Revelation 13. And, and again, this is, a, this is a picture of the future. And it may be just around the corner. Satan's conqueror going forth, the Antichrist. Revelation chapter 13. Look what the Bible says about uh, the ability to buy and sell. Look at verse 16. And he causeth both, he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save that he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. I don't believe I've ever stayed in a hotel room that was six, six, six. Don't believe I have. There may be some out there, but I'll tell you right now, that is the number of the Antichrist. And the Bible says you can't buy or sell if you don't have the mark, the name, or the number of his name. Now, let me say this. I've said it in the past. I'm going to say it again. The COVID vaccine is not the mark of the beast. Now, y'all can breathe. The COVID vaccine is not the mark of the beast. Now, I'm not telling you you should take it or you shouldn't take it. It's your body. You're going to have to make that decision. But what I'm telling you, it's not the mark. The mark of the beast is a mark or a number or a name. But when you, if you live in the tribulation, if you don't take the mark, the number, and name, you can't, buy, listen, you can't buy breakfast, you can't buy dinner, you can't buy supper, you can't buy anything because he controls the world monetary system. That blows my mind. He's got control of all the money. Then go back to Daniel chapter 11, if you would. He controls the wealth of the world. He conquers the lands of the world. And then look with, you, if you, with me, if you would, there in chapter 11. Look at verse number 44. Tidings out of the east, now the north shall trouble him. I'll say more about that in a minute. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make away many. Amen. Now, I'm going to say... The Antichrist also conquers the people of the world. You know, it's one thing that, to have control of a government. It's another thing to have control of the land. It's an even bigger thing to have control of the finances. But then when you come right down to it, to control the people, to have the people. And the Bible says here that he shall make away many. He's a conqueror of people. And if you look back where we were, Revelation 13, look at it again. I want you to see that. Revelation 13, look at verse number 7. He's a conqueror of people. Amen. Revelation 13, 7. The Bible says this about what he's going to do to all the people of the earth. Revelation 13, 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Amen. He is in the business of the worship, though I believe that the Antichrist himself is an atheist. We've already seen that. But I believe that he's in the business of people worshiping him. And he's going to cause all to do that. He's going to conquer the peoples of the world, all the different religions. He's going to say, no, you're going to worship me. And I think in saying that, I think that tells us a little bit about the whole, I guess if you would, motive underneath this conqueror. If you go to Revelation chapter 18, my daughter and I were speaking the other day and, and we were talking about slavery. Is slavery in the Bible? Well, the word slavery only occurs twice in the Bible. One of the times is right here in Revelation 18, and this is the mystery Babylon. This is, this is that religion that underlies the false religions of all the world. And if you look what the Bible says in verse 13, it lists all these things 
that Babylon trades in, that it deals in. Verse 13, and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense. Revelation 18, 13, and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves Amen. and souls of men. You know what I'm convinced of? I'm convinced of this. We preached it this morning. You and I, you and I cannot lose our standing with God. If you've been born again, you have the righteousness of Jesus Christ. But the devil wants to see as many souls damned to an eternity in hell as he can possibly see. And during the tribulation, people are going to be dying by the droves. I'm talking about one-third of the population at a time dying and going off into a Christless hell. He enjoys that. I'll tell you what that does for me. That tells me that we ought to be on the other side of that. We ought not to enjoy anybody going to hell. We ought to want to see people get born again and go to heaven. Amen. But his motive, his, his despicable, deceitful motive of promising people the world and promise them fame and promise them fortune and pleasure is to take and put the hook in to be able to drag them down to a place made for the devil and his angels in hell. And that's what he deals in. And that is exactly what the Antichrist is going to end up with his motive. Amen. He's going to conquer the peoples of the world. You say, preacher, you're terrifying me. Well, don't be afraid because if you're born again, you and I won't be here to be conquered. Amen. Won't be here. Amen. Won't have to worry about that. I won't be bowing my knee to the Antichrist. Oh, no. I won't be bowing my knee to him. I won't take a mark. I won't take a number of name. You know why? Because as a five-year-old boy, I bowed my knee to the Lord Jesus Christ and said, I'm a sinner, Lord, and I need your salvation, and that is my conquering king. Amen. 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 But the Antichrist, a conqueror of people. Go back, if you would, with me to Daniel chapter 11. Let's see if we can't end on a good note, because right now it looks pretty bleak. Would you say amen to that? So he's a conqueror. Revelation 6, he goes out on a white horse, a crown's given to him and a bow. He goes forth to conquer and to conquer. So at this point, he's pretty much had his way. Look at verse number 44. Something happens in verse 44. But tidings out of the east, that contrast and conjunction, but tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore shall he go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make away many. Something happens there in verse 44 that troubles him, that bothers him. And it says tidings out of the east and out of the north. And again, I'm not going to give you any speculation. I, I know we could go probably to Ezekiel 38 and 39, the battle of Gog and Magog. But here it says tidings out of the east and out of the north. I've heard people say, well, the north is Russia. Or they said that the, the north is Europe, Gog, Magog. I even had one writer, he said that the north is heaven. But I would say this. I think I get that kings of the east. Verse 44, tidings out of the east. Put a little mark there and go if you would to Revelation 16. Revelation 16. So the Antichrist having his way. He's conquered the world. He has the world governments. He has the world's land. He has the world's treasure, the finances. And he's got the people of the world. They're all worshiping him. And it looked as if Satan has taken and achieved his purpose. He's finally captured the creation of God. Amen. Revelation 16, verse number 10, And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast. That's the Antichrist. And his kingdom was full of darkness. And they gnawed their tongues for pain. They start to lose their minds. Something unsettling is going on here. Look at verse number 11. And blaspheme the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. Look at verse 12. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. And the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Amen. Who might that be? Well, the kings of the east. What's east of the Euphrates? Well, there's a lot of things east of the Euphrates. India is east of the Euphrates. China is east of the Euphrates. There's all kinds of countries that way, but the, that's made ready for the kings of the east. Look at verse 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs, Come out of the mouth of the dragon. Next time you eat frog legs, remember Revelation 16, 13. 
I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, that's Satan, out of the mouth of the beast, that's the Antichrist, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, that's his prophet. Boy, isn't that amazing how, how much the Antichrist or Satan wants to be like God. You've got God the Father, you've got God the Son, and you've got God the Holy Ghost. Verse 14, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Amen. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a tongue called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. So whatever happens in Daniel 11, 44, there's some tidings from the east and from the north, and we know that there is a truth that the kings of the east are coming after those unclean spirits go out, and they're coming forth to battle. And you, know, you find that throughout other passages. In fact, let's just read a few of them. I think it'd be good for you to see this. Go, if you would, to, again, Zechariah. I know a little bitty book right at the back of the Old Testament. Zechariah chapter 14. Would you go there just a moment? I'm about to get ahead of myself, but we'll just go ahead there. Can you find Zechariah 14? Armageddon. I've never been to Megiddo. We were going on a trip to Israel, a group of us, and the virus stepped in, canceled that trip for us. I've just about made up my mind I was going to go back again, and then they started sh shooting rockets that direction. Maybe I just need to wait until after the rapture and go see it at the end of those, at, when, when the millennium starts maybe. Zechariah chapter 14, look what the Bible says. Verse 1, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee, for I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. The city shall be taken, the houses rifled, the women ravished. Half the city shall go forth into captivity. Satan hates the Jews. May I say this, we ought to love the Jewish people. He hates the Jews. Half the city shall go forth into captivity, and the rest of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth Amen. and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle, and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley. Look at verse 9. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day there shall be one Lord and his name one. I've been preaching about Satan's conqueror. I, I want you to know Satan has a conqueror that's going to gather the world's wealth and the world's government and the world's treasure, but there's a conqueror coming from heaven whose name is Jesus Christ, and he's going to conquer that conqueror. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at Joel. Joel, another little book right there, just a few pages back to your left. Joel chapter 3. Joel 3. Joel chapter 3, look what the Bible says in verse number 9. Now watch, again, we're talking about Armageddon. This is what I believe is going on in verse 44. All right, that's not going to happen until the end of the tribulation, so that's seven years away, but this, this conqueror from Satan is just on the horizon. Verse number 9, proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. The fullness of the Gentiles is going to end. The time of Gentiles ruling the world is going to end. Prepare war, wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw up. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Valley of Megiddo. For there shall I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put you in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full. The fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. And the heavens and the earth shall shake, but the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. Hey, the conqueror from Satan is going to conquer the world, but the king of kings is going to come and conquer him. Yeah. That's Dan, that Daniel 11. Go back to Daniel 11. Hallelujah. Verse 45, he shall plant his tabernacles, his palace between the seas. Mediterranean perhaps? 
in the glorious holy mountain. We know where that is in Israel. Yet he shall come to his end and none Amen. shall help him. You say, when does that take place? We started off in Revelation 6. Go to Revelation 19. You remember Revelation 6, I read to you about one on a white horse with a crown going forth conquering and to conquer? Mm. Can I read to you what happens at the end of Daniel chapter 11? This is what happens. <laughs> Verse 11, and I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. I'm going to tell you right now, the one sitting on this white horse isn't the same one that was sitting on it in Revelation chapter 6. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. That sounds like my Savior. Amen. And in righteousness doth he judge and make war. Look at this. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head, not one, were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations and shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the wine presses of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. Watch. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, Hey, hey King of kings and Lord of lords. All right, look at verse 19. You watch them, they're gathered together. Here comes the king of kings on a white horse and the heavens roll back like a scroll and behind them are all the hosts of heaven on those white horses. That's you and I. And verse number 19, and I saw the beast, there's the Antichrist, Hallelujah. and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken. And with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, which he had deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. Are you watching? Th these both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. I'm telling you, it stopped just as soon as it started. They're all gathered together and they're saying, come on, come on. And Jesus says, I'm coming, come on, come on. And Jesus says, I'm coming. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword. And I believe, listen, he destroys all the armies of the Antichrist. He destroys all that conquering army. And I, I, Oliver Green said it this way. He says, I think he grabs a hold of the Antichrist himself and throws him into the pit. <laughs> now, I can't say that I believe that, but I'm telling you right now, if the Lord wanted to do that, he could do that. But are, you, are you listening? You and I get so worried about who's going to win the next election, the midterm elections, and what's going to happen right now in D.C. Hey, hey, I'm telling you, one day there is one coming named Jesus Christ. He's going to put it all back in order. Amen. Amen. You say, how long was this term of office? A thousand years. Get out of here. Amen. Can you hear somebody saying, we need, we, need, we need term limitations. Won't be any term limits. He'll sit on the throne for a thousand years. Yes. In Jerusalem, of the tribe of Judah, yes. the King of kings and Lord of lords. You know, I'm not worried about tribulation. I'm not worried about the Antichrist. Because I've got a king that's a conqueror that's a whole lot greater than what the devil's got to try to do. I'm not going through it. But the, are you listening to me? But the world, are you listening? The world. If you're here tonight and you're not saved, the world is going to come underneath the control of the Antichrist. The governments are going to be taken. The land is going to be taken. The wealth is going to be taken. And he's going to take people, the souls of men. You know what I, I'd do if I were you here tonight and I wasn't saved? I'd put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. What I, I wouldn't, I, listen, I wouldn't try to figure it out. Well, I, I can see somebody saying, well, I tell you, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to be smarter than the devil. Yeah, right. Go ahead and help yourself. I'm just going to be stronger than the devil. Go ahead and try to help yourself. You know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to put my faith in the one that's the conqueror of all. Amen. And I'm not worried about that. So now, if, if the message tonight really troubled you, don't let it trouble you. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. My, my, what a book. Amen. 
I can hear somebody say, do you really believe all that? Every word. Just like I believe that a virgin came forth and conceived and bare a son and his name was Jesus. Just like that same Savior who was sinless went to the cross of Calvary and hung and died for the sins of man, was buried and on the third day rose again. You say you believe that? Every single word of it. Hallelujah! Every word of it. Get out of here! Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you tonight that as we have looked through this 11th chapter of Daniel and the surging spirit of the Antichrist that is evident all around us, an atheistic thought, anarchist thought, blasphemous thought, Lord, in taking and promoting things that are unnatural between men and women and all of those things coming to fruition with a conqueror that comes straight from the pit of hell and Lord takes and grabs this world's governments and treasures and lands and people. And yet, Lord, we rejoice that as we read the last verse that he shall come to an end <laughs> and none can help him. Boy, I'm glad you can help us, Lord. We thank you for that. And Lord, we pray that you'd take and you'd receive our gratefulness for this. In Jesus' name, amen. While are you seated? Ken, I want you to play just a verse. If you're here tonight and you're not born again, boy, I would just encourage you. Consider eternity. That trumpet sounding. Consider what you'd face. Would you come tonight? Would you have enough courage to get up out of your seats? I don't want anything to do with that time period, that, that devilish time period. Would somebody get up out of your seat? Anybody like that? Would you come tonight? Brother Hope, would you want to sing a verse? Go right ahead. Some glorious morning, sorrow will cease. Some glorious morning, all will be peace. Heartaches all ended, school days all done. Heaven will open, Jesus will come. Some golden day break, Jesus will come. Some golden day break, battles all won. He'll shout the victory, break through the blue. Some golden day break. And thank you. The pastor's going to get ready for baptism, and we'll go into a church conference here real quick. If you'll just bear with me, I have several pages to read, and then uh, we'll have the baptism in just a moment. Brother Greg Allgood is coming, and he'll be making some statements here in a few minutes. So just uh, listen up and bear with me if you would. Tabernacle Baptist Church went into the regular church conference with the minutes from the last meeting read and approved. No request for church letters, but recommendations for church letters were granted and approved. Two people came by baptism. I'm sorry, two people came by...
most meetings we've had in a long time. All those people listed that got baptized. Wasn't that a blessing? All right. Now, kind of get started off here. We definitely don't need to drop that one. So, James, can you get me on my mic right here? Brother Steve, or I mean Brother Randall and Claire, where are y'all? Are y'all here? Come on down front, Brother Randall, Brother Claire, Sister Claire, y'all come on down this way. I'm going to go ahead and get this taken care of right now. This is Randall and Claire Fushi. Did I say that right? I didn't say that right? Kind of. They are coming from Liberty Baptist Church in Ohio. And they want to join Tabernacle Baptist Church by statement. So, Randall, I'm just going to ask you, Randall, have you been born again? Have you been scripturally baptized? Okay. And Claire, have you been born again? Have you been scripturally baptized? All in favor of taking them in as members of Tabernacle Baptist Church, raise your hand. Amen. All right. And then Brother Jernigan, Miss Barbara, no, no, don't go anywhere yet, brother. Y'all, y'all. Yeah, we don't. Uh, now, y'all can sit down, but just don't go anywhere yet, brother. We won't come by and shake your hand. Brother Brother, Brother Jernigan, Brother Gene Jernigan, Sister Barbara, um, he told me the next time I'm at Tabernacle Baptist Church, I want to join Tabernacle Baptist Church. So, Brother Gene, have you been born again? Have you been scripturally baptized? All right, Mrs. Barbara, have you been born again? Have you been scripturally baptized? You have, all right. All in favor of taking the Jernigan family and raise your hand. All right, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Maybe you'll get by and let them know that you appreciate them, that you love them, and we're glad that God sent them our way. Now, uh, baptism has nothing to do with salvation. Salvation is something that takes place before baptism. We baptize only people that have been born again. And so tonight it's my privilege to get to baptize two of our young men here at Tabernacle that have been born again. All right, Mike. This is Micah O'Shields. Micah, that you're how old are you? Six. You're six. And you told me what happened to you? I got saved. You got saved. Did you get saved at home or at church? Home. Home. And who helped you? Who helped you do that? Mom. Your mom did? But who saved you? Jesus. Jesus did. That's exactly right. My brother, upon your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, buried in his likeness, raised to walk in newness of life. Amen. 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 All right. All right, get saved. Amen? Yes. Blessing when ours get saved. Well, if you'll stand to your feet, thank you so much for being here tonight. We appreciate that. And uh, Lord willing, we'll see you this coming Wednesday night. Great service ahead. 